This is a 100 amp hour 24 volt battery or 25.6 nominal voltage battery from USB times. Now this battery has pretty much the same form factor as their 12 volt 200 amp hour battery. This is their 200 amp hour 12.8 volt battery. Now both of these batteries have the same energy density. So you will get the same amount of energy out of this battery as you would this battery. The difference is, is this battery is going to be using four banks of two. So there's going to be two batteries in parallel and then those two banks are going to be series up to make 12 volt battery at 200 amp hours. This battery here is going to be using eight cells and they're going to be series up to make the 24 volt or the 25.6 volt nominal. I'm expecting that both of these batteries are going to have pretty much the same build quality. I've torn down this battery in a previous video and in this video we are going to capacity test and tear down this battery here. Now what I'm expecting is each cell is going to be seriesed at 100 amp hours and the BMS may be the exact same BMS, just a different balance lead configuration as this 200 amp hour battery. So let's get to a capacity test and see if we can't get the 100 amp hour capacity out of this 24 volt battery. Now the first thing I want to do is see at what voltage the battery disconnects from charging. Now a 24 amp hour battery is going to disconnect at 29.2. If this disconnects around 28.8, 28.9, I'd be happy. Okay, let's boost up the amperage. Okay, and as you've seen there, I think it was at 28.8 or 28.9, kind of flashed pretty quickly. But nonetheless, we are fully charged. So I have the battery here. This is my smart shunt I'm going to be using to monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and charge this up. It's running through the smart shunt, which is running through a 24 volt inverter, which is then running into a 12 volt time USB charger at 20 amps. And that is running over to a battery bank that is going to charge up most of my batteries. So I'm trying to conserve energy by uh, discharging it into another battery bank. Of course, there's gonna be losses going from DC to AC to DC. Okay, so we're ready to start the test. I'm just waiting for the, there goes the charger. Ooh, and I wanna be up around 20 amps. I'm only seeing 12. Okay, I'm going to reconfigure. I'm going to hook up a uh, 30 amp charger and see if I can get closer to the uh, to the 20 amps I'm looking for. So I'm going to stop this test. And one moment. Okay, now I have a 30 amp charger hooked up to the 12 volt side. Now let's see. Charger kicked in. There we go, that is almost perfect. Okay, so I have a 30 amp charger on the DC side and I'm drawing about 20 amps from the battery. So I'm gonna let this test run, should be about five hours and I'll be back with the test results. Let's take a look at the product manual. So we get a quick start guide uh, with our little party animal guy. So this is just gonna give you some good basic information to follow when hooking up your battery. And let's go straight to the parameters. So we have a lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, nominal capacity of 100 amp hours, usable capacity 100 amp hours, we're testing that right now. Nominal voltage is gonna be 25.6 volts. Our energy is 2,560 watt hours of usable capacity which is the equivalent of a 200 amp hour 12 volt battery. So our maximum continuous discharge and charge is 100 amps. Our maximum discharge current for five seconds is gonna be 280 amps. And our maximum continuous load is gonna be the 2,560 watts. So this battery can be series connected to a 48 volt. So you can have two of these in series to get a 48 volt pack and you can also parallel up to four 100 
amp hour 24 volt batteries to make 400 amp hours uh, different ways to connect yeah so that is the product manual um, definitely like to check the parameters page to see the maximum charging discharge parameters and the battery is uh, the typical ABS case it's the exact same build quality as the 212 volt battery I reviewed still the same epoxy terminals uh, still the same pretty much graphics so this discharge test is almost complete we're at 82.4 amp hours right now and it is still discharging so I'll leave this be and I will be back once we hit our low voltage disconnect to see how many amp hours I was able to pull out of this battery and the battery test has concluded we have 104 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour battery so we are four amp hours above the rated capacity so this test is a pass now let's tear this puppy open and see what's inside okay I think I've got it open enough I can get the reveal maybe not so much well, I thought I had it open enough still a couple or a couple stubborn spots there we go all right now this looks strikingly similar to the 200 amp hour battery actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab the 100 amp hour battery and compare it okay so we can see these are very similar now I put this tape on here after putting this battery back together I just did it because I removed the BMS off of their shipping straps so this tape was not original but you can see everything pretty much looks the same like here's our balance lead cables and we have two sets of balance lead cables because it's a 24 volt pack instead of a 12 volt we have our high temperature sensor and we also have our high temperature sensor and you can see that is the model number of this BMS and that is the model number of this BMS so these BMS's are universal uh, they can use them in a bunch of different configurations and the way you can tell is you can see up in here we have B1 all the way up to B21 so we can actually do a pretty large pack with this BMS so the build quality is the exact same as their 200 amp hour 12 volt battery that's what I figured we've already pulled the cells out of the 12 volt battery let's pull them out of here just for sh you know what and giggles and then uh, I'll see if there's anything that might be wrong but everything looks good I mean all the balance lead cables are good all these are soldered and shiny so they were at they were at the proper temperature um, the buzz bars look laser welded on uh, let's pull it out see if they're using the same cells as last time almost out ah, there we go Whew. so again you can see we have a, a strip of adhesive on the bottom here that's what was giving me all those problems but everything looks to be the same we have the vented padding on top now you can see we have our main positive here and then that comes over series, comes over series, comes over series, and so on, all the way through to get the 24 volt pack. Now it'll be interesting to see if we still have the same cells. They look to be the exact same. Okay, let's see if I can get a clean QR code. Oh, there we go we got a hit so again we have the gang fang cells um, this was manufactured May 8th 2022 let's go for the next one and that one's got a little bit of glue and a balance lead cable in the way so this one was manufactured March 8th and again March 8th so a couple of months difference uh, manufacturing but not a huge deal not a huge deal at all um, this battery did pull the full 100 amp hour capacity 
The uh, build quality is just what I expected. It's a great build. Uh, we only have a high temperature sensor though, so just keep in mind that it's a high temperature sensor and there's no low temperature charging protection on here. So everything looks good, everything's glued down. Uh, there's not much more I could say. This battery's a pass, cells look great. Uh, they test it to capacity. The BMS is, is good quality. Uh, looks like they've been using it for a while and I'm seeing zero complaints on them. We have individual cell holders to keep the cells separated. And all the balance lead cables are routed nicely within the separators, so yeah. So I'm gonna leave links in the description below. Uh, check this battery out, check out the company themselves. They have a lot of great products. And uh, thank you very much for watching, bye.